So in this question, we're looking at a smartphone that's falling off of a desk. And in this case, we're saying that the height of the desk is 0.95 meters. Uh, it falls from rest an initial velocity of zero. And the phone itself has a mass of 150 grams. Now, the part we have to be careful about here is it says that the um, impact takes 0 0.50 seconds. Just so you understand, this is not the time it takes to fall. Uh, that's the time of the impact itself, when it hits the floor itself. So we're going to have to deal with that number later. So the first part is determine the velocity of the phone as it hits the floor. Uh, probably the easiest way is to go ahead with a kinematics formula. We're going to solve for Vf, so we'll square root both sides, like that. Stick in our numbers, the initial velocity is zero. Now be careful when you put in the acceleration and the displacement, because that's a vector also. It's falling with negative acceleration, and the falling also means that when it fell 0.95 meters, that is also a negative. It's okay when we're taking the square root, because we're taking uh, two negatives multiplied together give us a positive. So when we go through all of that, we'll be fine. We'll get a final velocity that, at least on our calculator, pops out as 4.3 meters per second. Now, just a little special note here, though. The formula has a limitation. What we have to take into account is the phone did fall. It's going downwards. So to stay consistent with our signs here, we also have to put a negative sign onto that answer. It's just going to have a limitation of the formula that it doesn't show that to us otherwise. The other way that we could go uh, about solving this problem is we could say the phone starts with potential at the top and ends with kinetic as it reaches the floor, going the fastest it'll ever go. This is mgh. This is 1 half mv squared. Go ahead and cancel out those masses. And when you manipulate the formula, you'll get 2gh square root of the whole thing, which you'll notice is actually what this is doing, 2gh. Uh, when we put the numbers in here, uh, we'll still get the exact same answer. And again, we do have to be careful about that idea that the value has to be given as a negative because it's the only way to take into account uh, the consistency of saying an object falling down is going in the negative direction. This does influence how we look at our uh, solutions and calculations in the next part, where it says, determine the impulse acting on the phone. So for this, I specifically want impulse. So I have to take the F delta T equals M delta V formula, and snap it in half, and specifically look at that portion of the formula, because that's how I'm going to get just the impulse. And remember, we have to have that delta, otherwise it's momentum. And same thing here, that delta has to be part of the formula because we're looking at a change in velocity. So when it goes falling down, uh, we know that it has a mass of 150 grams, so we're going to change that to 0 0.150. Now when we do the final minus initial, you've got to be careful because remember, this is the moment of impact with the ground. It's final velocity is going to be zero because when everything's done, we're going to see the phone sitting there motionless. But its initial velocity, initial at the moment of impact, was when it came falling down at that 4.3 meters per second. So we got to be careful when we put that in. It's negative 4.3 because it's traveling downwards and we're subtracting it. So the stuff inside the brackets is actually going to end up being positive. So when I do my calculation, the impulse that's acting on it comes out as 0.65. Now you could write this again in either kilogram meters per second or newton seconds. It doesn't matter. They're equivalent units. It is positive impulse, though, because the uh, phone, when it fell, had negative momentum as it comes down and strikes the floor. The impulse is acting upwards which is going to take away that negative momentum. That does bring us to this question, though. Determine the force that acted on the phone to bring it to rest. I know the impulse, and I want the force. So manipulate the formula. 
put in your value for the positive impulse. And this is where that time finally comes into play, the time of the impact, which was 0 0.50 seconds. So that's going to give us a force acting on it of 1.3 newtons, which again is positive because for the phone coming downwards striking the floor, the force has to act upwards on it in order to bring it to rest. Now the last question is just where we have to talk about things because they tell us that the company is thinking of changing the design of the phone case so that as it hits the ground, instead of hitting and stopping, it will instead bounce back up off of the floor. And we want to know, using proper terms, if that design actually will be safer for the phone, you know, preventing damage to it. So really what we want to think of is, is this design going to make this number, the force acting on the phone, get smaller? I'm going to go back up to here, because that really actually does change what's happening with the impulse. This would no longer be zero. It's going to be a number. And I don't really care what number it is, but it's going to be a number that's positive because the phone is bouncing back up off of the floor. If this is a positive number, whatever it is, one, two, three meters per second, I don't care, but any number there that's not zero is going to make this part in the brackets a bigger positive number. Times that makes this bigger. It's going to be more impulse. It takes more impulse to stop it and throw it back up than just stopping it alone. If the impulse, and you can try that, you can try to put any number in there, the you know, reasonable number, for a upwards velocity, you'll find this becomes a bigger impulse. If the impulse is bigger, assuming it acts over the same collision time interval, then the force will also be bigger. So in this situation, changing the phone case that way would actually increase the impulse which would increase the phone, uh, the force acting on the phone, which would actually cause more damage to it.